This morning, we have the latest numbers on confirmed coronavirus cases throughout the Inland Northwest to help bring you facts, not fear. Governor Jay Inslee is penalizing non-essential businesses if they stay open during Washington's stay-at-home order, and he's asking for your help in finding those violations. This morning, we explain how. Hey, what up to the UW Medical Center? This is Lizzo. Shout out to all of y'all for being so brave and working so hard and making sure that we're safe and healthy and healing people. That is incredible. You guys are heroes. And so the least I could do is just send you some lunch. Um, I hope you guys enjoy the food. Uh, I hope it puts a smile on your face. And I hope that you feel loved and appreciated because you really, truly are. Thank you. Amid the coronavirus craziness, singer and songwriter Lizzo has donated lunch to the UW Medical Center as a way to say thank you for all of their amazing work. And she's received a lot of love and thanks from UW's medicine staff. She even got a shout out from Governor Jay Inslee. I think it needs to have the music to it because it says it turns out Lizzo's one, I can't even say it, no, 100% <laughs> that generous to Washington's healthcare workers. Thank you, Lizzo. Of course, you heard Dana Marie laughing there this morning. Thank you for joining us this morning on Up With Krim. On your Tuesday morning, I am joined uh, via social distancing by Jen York, Evan Ronnie, and Dana Marie McNichol. I'm sorry that you guys all had to hear that. My attempt to uh, put that to music, I really apologize. But everyone is live from great. home. I thought it was great. Sorry, guys. Uh, Jen, of course. Yeah, will do it again. No, no, not doing it again. Jen will be bringing us the latest on. I feel like my face is so red right now. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> Jen will be bringing us the latest on uh, Governor Jay Inslee enforcing this stay at home order, of course, when it comes to non essential businesses, as we talked about. Dana Marie will continue talking about some of the amazing pieces of art that people are using uh, to help them come to life. And Evan, of course, travels tracking your forecast with a chance of rain and snow. Evan, let's check in on that for you this morning to start off the morning. Yeah, pretty rare over the last uh, month or so that we've checked in on weather first thing in the morning. But hey, we are still picking up on some snow out there. It seems like spring is slow to start around the Northwest uh, as we continue with this winter like trend. But we are seeing some of the switch over to rain as the afternoon comes around. I want to give you a look at what we've got right now on radar that does show if we pause this at where we are now that most of those showers have largely tapered off, though there is still the chance of some snow across eastern Washington and North Idaho in the coming hours. I do want to note a winter weather advisory is in effect for the North Idaho Panhandle up to three inches possible, but areas that are not highlighted between about nothing. So maybe a dusting, if anything, uh, up to an inch over Snoqualmie Pass and Stevens Pass, three to four inches possible. There's also a winter storm warning in the area in pink in the top uh, left corner of your screen. Uh, yesterday, quite a breezy day. We will continue to see wind today, but it's not going to be as windy as it was uh, yesterday. So we're right now seeing those wind speeds move up to the double digits. Spokane right now at 10 mile an hour sustained winds. We're probably going to see maybe 15 mile an hour winds, but uh, all in all, our wind gusts are going to stay at about half of what they were yesterday. So yesterday we moved into the 40, 50 mile an hour range. Today we're going to stay maybe in the 20s. A light breeze, but not quite as abundant as they were yesterday. So everything's kind of taking a notch down for the day today. We stick with the trend of showery conditions, but not quite as dramatic as uh, the last couple days. For now, I will send things over to our very own Jen York, who is also working from home. Hi, Jen. Good morning, Evan, and good morning to the cats at your house. Zelda is off camera here. She is not interested in being on air this morning. But yeah, we are it's working from home today, mine. working to bring you some headlines. <laughs> yeah, Zelda couldn't care less that uh, we're broadcasting from home. She's curled up by the fire, enjoying her morning nap. Uh, but let's get into some headlines this morning. We have Governor Inslee's warning about hospitals being stretched thin across the state, especially as the coronavirus cases grow. Right now, the first wave of the majority of those cases are in the Puget Sound, but he's warning that people here in the inland northwest need to be prepared for a surge of cases closer to home. And so we want to be prepared for the expansion of our hospital system. It's one of the reasons why uh, I ordered elective surgery to be shut down so that we could stockpile personal protection equipment in Spokane so it will be ready when the wave hits Spokane. Now, Governor Inslee also touched on a lack of test kits in Washington. Now, he says cases right now have tripled in the state, and it's likely the governor, of course, will extend Washington's stay-at-home order, but so far, no official extension is announced. 
But Governor Inslee did announce some penalties for non-essential businesses not complying with the stay-at-home orders. He says there are three tiers now to enforcement. Of course, they're asking people to participate in the stay-at-home orders without having the state to enforce it. But uh, for those who are not complying, the first tier, law enforcement will deliver a warning. Second, the governor says businesses may get a citation or have their license revoked if they do not comply. And third, there is a possibility for a civil or criminal infraction if they do not comply. Governor Inslee is asking the public to report businesses not in compliance. For the link, you can text REPORT to 509-448-2000. Now, when reporting, people will be asked to provide the business name, address, and contact information. Those reports will be directed to law enforcement, and leaders will evaluate the information and then contact the business if it does indeed remain open. Well, some other local news here. Spokane leaders are surveying potential locations for a mass coronavirus response. Right now, the Spokane County Fairgrounds is being prepared as a potential quarantine and isolation site. The regional team is also considering using some other facilities around the area for a variety of uses. But members of that regional team, they're made up uh, of city leaders, uh, folks from the Spokane Regional Health District, just to name a few. Uh, they say they need more information before making any other decisions about using other facilities in the areas for coronavirus response. They say the goal, though, is to keep the healthy and unhealthy populations separate. And that is the key factor in deciding the best use for each potential location. But they say right now, the stay home, stay healthy requirements prevent several organizations from working together. Washington Attorney General Bob Ferguson announced landlords could be cited for evicting renters for not paying on time. Right now, there is a moratorium on evictions. The AG says his office has received complaints landlords are finding creative ways to evict people despite the moratorium then yes, we are looking at those very seriously. We'd be contacting the landlord, of course, um, and doing what we can to assist uh, the individual in that situation. So to be clear, we cannot have folks being evicted uh, while this moratorium's in place. That's bad for everybody's health. Now, Washington State Patrol troopers say citations can be issued for failing to follow that order. And they say arrests will be used as a last resort. Well, starting today, all Washington Department of Licensing offices will be temporarily closed. Drivers, though, can still renew their license online. And for the time being, all in-person appointments are canceled. Most Washington residents, though, are now eligible to renew their licenses and vehicle registration as well online. For a link to renew online, you can find that on creme.com. And if you put it off like me, getting the real ID, that's also been pushed back a year now as well. Joshua, I know I've been dragging my feet, updating my ID so you can get on a plane with just my driver's license, but looks like now we'll have another year to get that done. I think you just need to focus on staying home, staying comfortable. I love seeing how you and Evan Dana Marie are relaxing. Eventually we're going to have everyone in full pajamas. I'm calling it right now. I want to see it someday. You know, if I, gotta, if I have to wear my suit every day, I want you guys to do full pajamas one day. I mean, I don't hate that idea. <laughs> I think we might get a little too used to working from home when this is all said and done. Now that we've proven that it can be done, what's going to happen when we can finally go back to work? We're not going to want to go anywhere. <laughs> I call that a spoiler alert for what the what Up With Creme is going to bring in the next <laughs> few weeks. We'll see ahead what it's like. Thank you again for joining us, Jen, this morning and for welcoming us into your home. As we hit 709 this morning, we have the latest on local coronavirus numbers across our area. We know 136 people have been confirmed to have cases of the coronavirus in Spokane County this morning. Four people have died and 22 people are hospitalized. There are over 4,800 confirmed cases of the coronavirus statewide. 195 people have died in Washington state. King County reports the highest number of cases throughout the state with over 2,100 infections and 144 deaths. They are followed by Snohomish County, who has over 1,000 cases and 21 deaths. Now across state line in Idaho, there are 29 confirmed cases of COVID-19 in Kootenai County, 
Right now, there is one reported case in Bonner County with over 400, excuse me, with 415 cases reported statewide. Time now to join our own Dana Marie McNichol with a story about how works of art are coming to life as a way for people to enjoy themselves from home. Dana Marie, good morning. Good morning, Joshua, and good morning to all of those at home. I'm bringing you what's trending this morning. It is a challenge given by the Getty Museum in Los Angeles. So they're using social media to bring their community together. They asked for you at home to bring classic pieces of artwork to life. So they say, number one, choose your favorite piece of artwork. Number two, find three things lying around the house. And then three, recreate the artwork with those and then share them with us. And let me tell you, they have been awesome. Uh, what a fun way to spend your morning either looking at these pieces of artwork other people have created or even creating them yourself. They have been honestly very impressive. A lot of props being used, costumes being used. I love to see the one, uh, a girl with a pearl earring turned into now a man with a pearl earring. That is a, I'm pretty sure that's a dish towel, um, a sweatband, and a jingle bell that he has all used to create <laughs> that famous piece of art. Another one that we see is triple self-portrait by Norman Rockwell with that adorable fluffy pup there. A lot of people are using their pets to create these recreations, right? So we see some kitty cats, uh, a cat they're used in an abstract way, uh, a blue house made by a, um, a dustpan, People have used their kids to create this. This is just a fun way to maybe spend the day, do some research on the piece of artwork with your kids if you're looking for a homeschool um, project. I'm just gonna scroll through a couple of these you can see behind me, but these are really awesome ways to just have some fun. Social media challenge that uh, has come out through social distancing, but I think it has been so much fun to see what people come up with. Joshua, I think we have something for you on the oh, other yeah. side of that. Oh yeah, I am standing at the wall right now with, uh, yeah, isn't this amazing how quickly you can suggest something and then here we are. Okay, I have to do it. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna try are and do this. Are you the scream? Let's see here. Okay, so this is the scream. Let's see if I can do this. <laughs> uh, make sure I got it, there we go. Oh, is this gonna work? <laughs> oh. There we go. There we go. What do you think? I'm gonna do the face. I can't see you, but I'm sure it's amazing. Someone in the production, tell me <laughs> it's okay, so I can stop doing this. <laughs> oh my goodness! Well, if you're at home and you create, I'm assuming a it's piece okay. Of artwork, <laughs> I'm sure it looks fabulous, <laughs> Joshua. <laughs> Um, great. Send us your creations on Up With Crab. We want to see them and uh, let us know what you're doing this afternoon or this morning. This I will, love this. Yeah. Madonna and Child. This They're will never, this will never die. This will never die. This yeah. will be something that you all remember and hold against me forever. All right, but th <laughs> thank you, Dana Marie, for bringing that to us this morning. Of course, we're going to shift gears this morning a little bit as our Tuesday morning forecast starts to present itself a little bit. Why am I out of breath from taking a picture of art? I can't figure it out, but... Evan has figured out our forecast. He joins us after the break with more.